and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Obit Potato. This is Rogue State, a very, very interesting game, all about being a dictator, sort of, in a in a transitional government. It sounds very boring, but it's it's so unbelievably um, like like that like that uh, like that Sasha Baron Cohen movie, The Dictator. And it's, it's so unbelievably strange, and it's something that you can really only experience. Uh, I've played through the tutorial, I haven't played much further into it, but everything about it is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> Including, by the way, this music. I mean, <laughs> what on earth is this all about? Anyway, let's go to a new game. Family name is going to be Potato, because I'm uncreative. Um, you get to choose from both genders. Um, we're gonna choose male, obviously, and uh, yeah, we're gonna progress. Gonna do it in normal mode, and uh, we'll have to watch this intro we're because it is very three, interesting. Two, one. For those just joining us, we are fortunate to have an audience today with our glorious leader. Excellency, last week we experienced the conclusion of the trial of the tyrant King Solomon, with his execution scheduled for next Friday. With the Great Revolution finally concluded, what will the future political structure of the People's Republic of Visenji finally look like? Well, Zara, King Solomon was a corrupt and sadistic man. Under his rule, our people served while he sold away our most sacred objects to pay for his own luxuries. Hundreds of thousands of souls died under his tyranny, yet he was tolerated by the American imperialists. His death will give us closure, but our work is only just beginning. The people's revolution is never really over. We must rebuild this country from the ashes, reform it. The Revolutionary Council has put me in charge of the transitional government for the next five years to maintain order while a new constitution is drafted one that meets the needs of all the people. Many were expecting your brother Farouk would be named by the Revolutionary Council as the interim leader of Besenji. What role will he have in the transitional government? Farouk is popular to be certain and was a fellow patriot of the revolution. He will be given an appropriate role in my cabinet. It is often said that the Americans are suspicious of our transitional government and that you face a great deal of pressure from domestic interests seeking reforms. Our first priority is, of course, reconstruction. The American imperialists are of no concern at this time. Governance is not an easy task, but I assure the people that we will build a stronger Basenji together. Thank you again for your time, Excellency. It is a pleasure, Zara. There you have it. The intro scene, which I thought was unbelievably camp. In some ways, um, <laughs> the dictator or the guy, the guy that's in charge, you know, the guy that we're playing, he sounds very, very poncy, doesn't he? Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. All right. Not that there's anything wrong with that, by the way. I just thought it was really funny. Um, all right. What have we got here? Well, we got a whole bunch of stuff. So we have got four people that we have to assign to cabinet portfolios. The problem is. We've got Farouk, and Farouk is sort of like the bad apple because he wants, he wants to be in my position. He wants to be the boss of, uh, of Basenji. Is that how you say it? I think it is Basenji, or Basenji, whatever. Doesn't matter. So, each different minister that we actually assign gives us a different bonus. As you can see here, finance minister boosts our treasury income by 3 million a turn. However, as finance minister, Farouk will funnel 5 million into his private accounts. So that is pretty darn shitty. Now the unfortunate thing is, we have to assign everybody. We can't leave, um, we can't leave Farouk out because otherwise he would do something very, very naughty. And we need to keep him close, make sure that he doesn't uh, do anything rash and try to overthrow us. At least not yet. So I'm thinking, um, well, we need a finance minister, beautiful, a defense minister, uh, military loyalty. Yes, I think so. I don't think I care about intelligence breakthroughs that much hmm 
I think we assigned Farouk to be the intelligence minister because, let's face it, if he does that, he makes them 25% less likely. It's not like he's actually actively decreasing our approval ratings, which we'll talk about when we uh, when we get into things a little bit later on. Uh, we probably want to keep our military pretty close, uh, and foreign relations are all factions. I think we want all factions. Foreign minister, I can go without. Whatever, screw it. It's not a big deal. All right, this is what uh, this is what our cabinet's going to look like. Pretty happy about it. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right. This is the game. Excellency, my name is Excellency. As parliamentary chief oh, of the man. protocol. What a great game. It is my duty to ensure that your instructions reach our parliamentarians. Okay, I great. Settled into your new office. Great, buddy. Great. Can I offer some suggestions on our first steps to restoring Well, to what you would do, what you would do. No, leave me alone. No, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I want you to do is I want you to piss off because I've already I've already did his tutorial. Let me just put the uh, volume up a little bit. All right, we got a phone call. I'll take it. Greetings, Your Excellency. Greetings. I am Amal Sarkos, and on behalf of Boethia, I wanted to be the first to welcome the liberation of the People's Republic. Thank you, thank you. From the thank you, thanks. Republic. Very nice of you to say. The Salman regime was a threat to the, the only... The Salman regime? That is why we provided your rebellion with weaponry and training necessary to overthrow the tyrant. Thank you, thank you. The transitional government has restored Basinski's infrastructure and industry. Let us work towards restoring our thank trade you. relationship. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Contact me if there is any way Boethia can be of assistance to you. Thank, thank you. you for your call. Thank you. I am you. certain our two great nations will work together to bring... I love his voice. I love our, our voice. There is much work so to be good. Done, but I am grateful for your country's support. Thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Um, we'll discuss Apologies, this later. But I must go. Apologies. But I must Goodbye. go. Oh, goodbye. Alright. Let's chill out. Let me sort of explain a little bit what is going on, alright? This is our bank. This is our, well, this is our treasury. This is how much money we've got in the bank, so to speak. This is how much we get per turn. Um, this is our parliamentary approval so you know for example parliament and cabinet if we go and uh, have a look at this we stroll all the way across in a very awkward fashion you can see exactly who likes us so yeah Farouk he's not a big fan of us he's not a big fan of us however our cabinet they don't mind us too much and all of the individual parliamentarians um, are sitting pretty everybody's pretty happy with me and I'm gaining two loyalty points each turn which is not bad it's not bad at all right can we go back to the desk? Not well, not really without clicking on something else, which is uh, not something I really want to do. All right, so I guess we can probably talk about some of the other stuff then. Yeah, so we can um, we can actually produce resources or we can import resources and we get bonuses for uh, getting certain combos. So for example, if we get oil, we get money per turn uh, and we also get US relations. And if we start mining this ourselves out of our own ground, then we get the then we get it, then we get the bonus straight away. Um, however, if we import it, then we have to pay for it, but we still get the bonus, so it's pretty good. You know, pretty good, pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, all right, good. I think that's that's pretty well explained. Now there is a whole bunch of uh, of people within our country, rather like Democracy Three. You've got a whole bunch of different groups of people. So, for example, you've got the Patriots. Patriots believe in keeping Basenji for its people, supportive of protecting the environment. You know, they're pretty happy with that. Uh, capitalists, I don't really think I need to address this very much, but they, you know, they want free trade and they want to, uh, you know, they want to get tourism going and uh, it's it's all good. However, minus four approval per turn from our current policies, which isn't great. Fundamentalists, fundamentalists believe in the old ways that are the best and as the world changes around them, they hope to continue to incorporate faith into your decisions. Um, yeah, and these guys are, are moderately happy with us. And liberals, uh, the youth, they want equality, um, alleviate social ills, they want civil rights, civil liberties, human rights, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, you know, they're not too unbelievably happy with us at this this current moment in time. Um, yeah, this, this will all change as soon as we go to the next turn. By the way, um, this is a turn-based game, except it's slightly different because you can do four actions per turn. So each quarter is uh, is is like an action, 
and the actions are taken in a very very weird way that I will hopefully explain throughout um, throughout the game. So basically if we go into a menu, for example, treasury and commodity data, uh, we can go into this menu, we can look at it, and that doesn't count as an action. However, if we change anything, uh, like, I don't know, adjust the tax rate or whatever, which I think we should probably do because we want a little bit more money per turn, I think, uh, then that counts as an action. Yep, see, it's just gone to, uh, to three actions left, to yellow. Alright, so, Parliament Cabinet we've already looked at. Policies, we can have a little look at right now. Boom, and this is the whole variety of, of, uh, of policies that we actually have access to. So, for example, uh, minimum wage. I think a minimum wage is probably something that we want to do. Maybe it would make the Liberals happy with us, but it's going to make the Capitalists very unhappy with us. So we need to bear that in mind. Um, patriots and Fundamentalists, don't give a shit about minimum wage. It's fair enough. Um... And you can see the effect that it actually has here. I mean, it's going to lose us jobs if we have a high minimum wage. So maybe we'll just leave it at a low minimum wage. We don't want to upset the capitalists too much. And uh, yeah, we don't really need to afford the liberals too, too much attention right now. Which is kind of nice. Uh, you know, you can see all the policies that the liberals are fans of right here. If I hover over them, you can see the policies that capitalists are fans of as well. Um, free trade zone. I think we actually do want to go for this free trade zone here. It's going to make Patriots a little bit unhappy with us, but you know, Patriots are actually pretty happy with us right now. Also, important to note that since we're in this menu, all of what I'm doing right now only counts as one single action, right? So anything I do is an action within here. I think we need to probably get the capitalists on our side a little bit more. I imagine fundamentalists aren't going to like this if I do some gambling. Keep it banned for now. What about this? Temporary foreign worker programs. Yeah, Patriots really aren't a fan of that. Well, let's adjust that a little bit. So that we can... We, we want to try and even this out, alright? Like, we don't want to make it so... Um, oh, we want to... Union power is limited. We want to try and keep things roughly balanced. So that things don't get too crazy. A prayer week not practiced. I think that's... Yeah, that's going to make capitalists a little bit less unhappy per turn. Which is kind of what we want. This is capable law enforcement. This is a police budget. Okay. So this affects liberals and... Let's just leave it where it was for now. Uh, mass transit. I suppose we probably want mass transit. Mass transit, I think, is a good thing. However, it does cost a shit ton of money, which we should bear in mind. Let's let's knock it up a notch so that uh, people don't get too pissed off with us. And school funding, I guess. We should probably bump this up as well. Let's bump this up to uh, exceptional schools. This is going to give us an increased amount of GDP and UN relations. It's going to cost us a little bit of money, which I'm not super duper uh, happy about, I must say. But, you know, you do what you got to do. And most importantly, patriots are going to be happy with us. Only capitalists are going to be disappointed with us, right? Which is kind of nice. I'd rather go for that, actually, believe it or not. I'd rather go for that. You know, so we split we split the disapproval between the capitalists and the liberals. I feel that's a fairly fairly okay option. Alcohol policy that just upsets the fundamentalists. Yeah, that's fine. Let's leave it like this. Um unfortunately it's gonna cost us a lot of money to maintain school funding, but I think that we'll be fine. Gotta have faith. Gotta have faith, that's right. And besides, you know, we're just sort of feeling it out a little bit. We could, adju uh, we could adjust taxes should we need to. Um, what else do we want to look at? What else do I want to show you? Well, we've got the parliamentary advisor, who you've already seen. He's pretty boring. Build infrastructure. That's something that we have to do. The phone. Uh, let's go to the regional map. Let's have a look at the regional map because um, this sort of introduces a whole bunch of, uh, of new mechanics. So, as you can see... These are the goods that everybody uh, already has. We're currently not producing anything and we're not buying anything from anybody right now either. Um, so-called Shara has got cloth and it's got electronics. Um, 
Boitha, Boitha, or whatever, uh, has got uh, electronics and media products, I think that is. I can't quite see what that is, but that's definitely closed as well. So, yeah, we could buy something if we wanted to get those bonuses, but what's really, really important is comboing those bonuses together, you know? So, you know, for example, traditional cuisine, we would really like to get. We need to get whatever this is, goats, I would presume, and some sort of weird sand. That's cool. I can totally do that. Uh, the newspaper isn't really uh, a part of this until a little bit later on, I don't think. Um, but I think this is just going to keep you up to date with, uh, with, with how likely we are to get shot, I would imagine. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this. Yeah, so this is like a, an XP system that gives you a little bit of an extra bonus whenever uh, you play through it again. So, unlimited replayability. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> and then we've also got the Situation Room, which I haven't actually been to yet, but it's all to do with military, and I think it's it's going to be very, very interesting. We'll probably go to the Situation Room in the second episode, because um, because why not? I think what we're going to do this time is, uh, is build infrastructure. Let's splash out a little bit of money. Um, it's not going to cost us very much at all, so let's do it. So, restore water and sewage. This is really, really good because it's going to give us a 15% increase in tax revenue, and it's only going to cost us 10 mil. Easy peasy. Uh, allow foreign aid workers. Aid workers will arrive from non-governmental organizations and help manage labor shortages, provide humanitarian support, and assist with reconstruction of critical buildings and infrastructure. Cool. Now, what we have to do as soon as this policy has been enacted, we need to choose what we want. Do we want to say medical workers will tend to your sick and wounded? Uh, and this will, you know, give us a little bit of, uh, of relief, financial relief for healthcare costs. Uh, or do we want to say, hey, we want engineers rather than we want doctors. I think we want engineers rather than we want doctors. Um, I will I will suffer through that. You know, that's okay. That's on me, boys. That's on me. And, uh, and finally, the rebuild, the power infrastructure. It's another 15% uh, increase in tax revenue. I'll take it. Awesome. Sweet. That's damned good. Fingers crossed that our tax revenue is going to uh, increase enough to hopefully take us out of, out of losing money per term. But even if we don't, you know, we've still got 280 mil in the treasury, which is quite amazing for a country that has just been through a revolution. I'll, I'll have you know. Um, but yeah, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we want to do and that we can do on turn two. We're probably going to try and beeline for all of this. I mean, this is obviously just the reconstruction phase. I don't know what's after this, but remember that we are part of this traditional, this traditional, uh, <laughs> transitional government. And, uh, and that involves transitioning um, from the current system to the future system, whatever that may be. And we can choose what that future system is, right? So that's really, really cool. I like that a lot. Um, but yeah. All right. Can we not go to our overall popularity? Is that not something that we can do, apparently? Okay. Cool, because we could do it. We could. Let's go to the treasury uh, and commodity data right now. Sweet. All right, this is good. How much is our healthcare policy? How much is our healthcare costing us? Yeah, so we could have saved 3 million on that, but, you know, thanks to our increases, we're not actually going to lose any money per turn, which is really, really nice. Um, we can check the prices of commodities, which is pretty cool. Oil being at the top, as you would expect, you know, crazy, crazy. All right, so what we can do is we can also discreetly funnel money from the National Treasury into your offshore bank account. All deposits are charged 20% commission for money laundering services. Money can with be withdrawn from this account and moved into the Treasury at any time. Having a large balance in this account at the end of the game will increase your final score, earning you XP that can be used to unlock additional gameplay mo modes. There you go. I mean, ultimate... Corruption Dictator Simulator 2016. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is really, really awesome. And um, yeah, uh, we can skip through the, the end of the turn just for the sake of it. All right. A Chinese biotechnology firm has been banned from operating in China due to unethical practices. They're seeking to invest in a large research facility in Basenji due to our open financial system. Hmm. Should we get 3 million per turn? I mean, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think we'll take it. 3 million per turn is nothing to sniff at. Let's take it. Beautiful. Perfect. What is this? Request that you increase the treasury growth rate to 19 per turn within the next 5 months. Wow. You're a bit demanding, but you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're getting there and it's going to be awesome. Ladies and gents, that's where this episode is going to finish up. 
I'm loving it. I hope you're loving it too, because I think this is going to be really, really great. I really, really do. Absolute highlight, without a doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for watching. My name, of course, has been Rogue Potato. This has been Rogue State. Until next time, bye.